Hey guys, welcome to Star Wars Timeline. Today we're taking a look at another fan film. This one is called The Dark Legacy. It was released on July 10th, 2017. It is written and directed by Anthony Petromonaco, starring Aaron Wu, Fabian Garcia, Dave Thomas. Guys, the credits are actually quite large for this one. I'll leave everything in the video description below, including a link to the original video. Please go to their YouTube channel and support them. I think they definitely well deserve it. Guys, this will be broken into several sections. I'll talk about the visual aesthetic of the film. I'll talk about the action. We'll discuss the sound design, the overall story. At the very end, I'll give it my final score. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. I really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing and liking this video if you enjoyed this. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's begin with the visual aesthetic. Whoever has worked on this video, once again, you'll see the full credits. They have done a phenomenal job on this. Everything looks very highly produced, something that I would actually expect to see on Disney+. Plus. And there's this seamless trans transition from CGI to live actors. The visual effects are very well done right from the beginning. It grabs your attention when you're in outer space and you see all the planets and it homes in on of our planet of interest and it goes through the stratosphere and lands on the actual surface. It's a seamless transition. It is so well done. I had nothing but positive uh, 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 things to say there. The lightsaber effects were absolutely fantastic as well. You know, you see this stylistic choice of picking a lightsaber duel taking place in the dark. I have to say, the lighting is immaculate. You always see the actors. You're never confused by the action, which it sort of looks simple on the outside, but I'm pretty sure a lot of thought and consideration of how to film it went into it to make it look so effective because the lightsabers themselves, they don't look like glow sticks. They really pulse with energy and they really feel special and magical. Just like that first time when I saw a New Hope and a Luke Skywalker ignites his lightsaber and we see the effect for the first time, this is exactly how it feels like. Only this time around, the blades themselves are the beams are much wider and there is a lot of characteristic to each one. The difference between the green one and the yellow one, you definitely see something else is going on there, which once again definitely feels like it was stylistic and deliberate choice to kind of accentuate what each character represents. Um, I got to say also, the digital backgrounds, when, once we land on the planet itself and we see a lot of stuff in the background there, it's very effective. We see these statues, which I'm going to call them from this point forward, basically Zaffo people. Well, this is what they reminded me of from the Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order video game, kind of these ancient race of beings. Obviously, we don't know exactly what they are. They actually, the profiles of the their skulls kind of look like uh, Snoke from Star Wars sequels. So there's something going on there, a bit familiar, but something new there. Obviously, the statues are giant. They're way over-exaggerated, but it gives you a sense of, place there and history and something going on you're like huh hold on a second there's definitely lore happening it almost feels like hey where's the next chapter after you finish watching this film you want to see more just to get to understand what is this location now let's talk about the action perfect choreography i mean absolutely flawless because what what drives the sequence here is emotional component and it's very economical in movement I prefer myself uh, the uh, battle sequences from the original trilogy and the sequels. I'm not on board with the very flashy prequel kind of like lightsaber duels, except for a Darth Maul on Qui-Gon on Obi-Wan Kenobi. To me, that was the strongest one. Every time the Jedi go into like lightsaber twirling, like glow sticks, and they do the, a lot of finesse and unnecessary movements, I sort of kind of lose interest. Remember when Luke was uh, dodging Kylo Ren's lightsaber in uh, The Last Jedi and he does that little matrix dive, I, I'm not with it. I, I really enjoy very economical, precise movements that go right into the action. And this is how I felt choreography was handled here. There are still a couple of flashy movements here and there, but primarily the whole bulk of the battle takes place where it's opponent versus opponent, and they know how dangerous these lightsaber weapons are, and they're very focused because each moment could spell life or death situation for them. Um, and I also enjoyed how it was filmed, it wasn't interrupted by super fast cuts, like just for the sense, of, you know, for the sake of flashiness. It's very clear and deliberate what is happening on screen at every point. And once again, I have to say the added difficulty was uh, uh, the challenge shooting it at night, and they still made it feel very, very clear what is happening in that uh, uh, battleground. Also, I enjoyed the pacing between the action and the narrative because as we see this 
Padawan or the student fight their self-imposed master, somebody who wants to tutor this young one, and he recites the Sith lore to her, and he combats that person. It also reminds her of her lost brother. You, you understand that if something is happening, there's a shared history between the two. There's a sense of conflict, which, once again, it's not so easy to do. It looks very simple in a span of a 10-minute short film. But, guys, I guarantee you, from a cinematic standpoint, from a filmmaker's perspective, it's not easy to do at all. And I have to say, they pass with flying colors here. It's, it's beautifully done, and I couldn't get uh, enough. Actually, when it was finished, I started uh, doing a little bit of Googling. Hey, when is part two coming out? I really want to see a sequel to that. Um, next, which I think is crucial to the success of this film, is the sound design. It is accompanied by absolutely haunting and beautiful uh, musical score. It sets this very dark tone, and it describes character moods and their emotional states perfectly. Because I feel that sound is half of storytelling. If you take away the sound, unless it's a very specific moment in the sequence that also happens here, where you see music throughout, and then at one point where they share a couple of blows, there is no music. It's a very deliberate choice there to say, like, hold on, they're now in the heat of combat. They, they're very focused. Let's home in on the action itself. And then it brings music back and brings all that flood of emotions and the audience, the viewer, trying to understand what is happening between these two. Did he kidnap her? Is he trying to teach her? Did she agree to this kind of situation where she actually puts herself on the leash just to get to the greater truth and try to understand the Sith code? Or what is the balance between the dark and the light side? So many things are happening there and there's so many questions firing up in my mind as I'm watching this which is a testament to how well this was filmed. Um, and also the sound effects accompanying the lightsabers themselves. I mentioned earlier in this review that the, they look very good. The light beams, how each one has a, a personal characteristic is great. But also the way that the lightsabers sound is very, very good. That beautiful, recognizable hum, each lightsaber is pulsing with energy. And they basically are interpretations of the characters themselves. That there's a lot of passion or perhaps aggression going out there they're trying to either contain or unleash either or it looks like the master the, the sith character was coming going in full in and while the person the lady she was trying to hold it and maintain balance because she seems to be a jedi padawan at least that's as much as i gathered so what's the story here what did i draw in conclusion to me whether i'm watching a short five minute film or whether it's a full show like uh, obi-wan kenobi at disney plus Story always takes the first place, and everything else needs to complement it. Everything else needs to inform the story. Otherwise, I lose interest very quickly. I mean, don't get me wrong. I will enjoy something like that other fan film of Obi-Wan Kenobi going versus Vader, and it's nothing but a duel happening for like five plus minutes. It's extravagant. It, it looks absolutely fantastic. You know, it's, it's a cool rewatch once or twice. But after that, I kind of lose interest. I'm like, oh, okay, it was beautifully done. I give all the credit to the filmmakers. But that's not what I personally enjoy. I enjoy short films like this one, where within 10 minutes, they're able to establish so much lore and character conflict that you can't help but feel like, hey, I just read a short story or a first chapter of a book. Give me the rest of it. Where is the rest of this film? It looks so dope, so cool looking. Obviously, they couldn't prolong it for hours and hours. Otherwise, it would start diluting the quality of it. I would just probably go nowhere. It takes a lot of effort, time, and money, of course, to produce a fan film. So once again, I loved where we begin with these Zappho statues, these ancient representation of these beings. Like, hey, is this planet kind of like strong in the force? Or did it hold some sort of knowledge or secrets? Why this planet? Why this location? And of course, the, the added impact is when the Sith character has a mask. He has a beautiful, beautiful character design, which, hey, does he belong here? What is underneath that mask? Is he one of these people that we see representation of uh, in those statues? It was very interesting. I personally had a, a feeling of a, some ancient or antique history uh, regarding the Force and something in connection with the, with the Jedi and the Sith as well. Um, and I also liked, right from the beginning, how we clearly see that this young woman is literally leashed. She's chained to the ground, and she can't move from, from this place. It's not done just for visual flair, like, ooh, look, there's something is happening. There's a story going on here. 
And I, I wanted to find out why she's leashed there, why her brother was taken from her, you know, what, what was her transgression. And one thing that I really want to mention here is the choice of the actress. She is the one that we see for most of the picture. Obviously, we have another character doing the voice work, and I give a, gotta give a, the shout out to the voice actor, but it's mostly the face that we relate to on the screen, the physical performance. That's what I think audience is drawn to first. And at the very beginning, I was a little bit cautious because I have to say, Erin Wu, right? She's a smoking hot actress. She's a very beautiful young woman. And my thoughts were, okay, is this going to be an instance where they exploit the appearance of a young woman, of a young actress, just to add eye candy to the short film and just to draw attention? And all the guys be like, oh my God, did you see that fan film? That actress looks smoking hot. No, I'm very happy that this was not the... Uh, 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 what happens here. In this particular film, she's a good actress, she's channeling emotion, and once you get past the point that she's a beautiful actress, you start getting into the characters, like, hey, she's tormented, and this this person, he's trying to twist her mind, or is, she, is he trying to reveal greater truth to her? What is happening? She, she's looking at that lightsaber, which is green. It's like, it basically gathers the essence of her lost brother, is it something that she uh, uh, like uh, basically chained herself? Is she chained inside emotionally, spiritually, and she's trying to find the true balance? And I really love the closure, the ending here, where all these phantoms attack her all at once, and yet she's able to gather herself, and she finds the right target, and boom, she kills it with one stroke. Which, to me, basically, the story is telling that at the end of it, she doesn't embrace the Sith code. But at the same time, I can't say that she's fully a Jedi because she does defend herself and she goes in a full attack. So it's kind of a little bit against the Jedi code where she goes on the offensive. So maybe perhaps she attains a true balance. Anyway, once again, I keep reiterating this. It's something that I would have loved to learn more about. If somebody is willing to write a whole book or a short story based on this fan film, I would be more than happy to check it out. Also, what threw me off is that our antagonist is using a green lightsaber, not your choice red lightsaber that we associate with the Sith. It was very disorienting, confusing, and adding more to the story. Once again, what is he doing her, uh, to her? How is he twisting her mind? Is he using her emotions against her? And the ending is actually quite open-ended. When he says she unmasks that person, we see that tormented, grotesque face underneath. And he says, you have passed the test. I am your... And that's it. It ends over there. It almost like that movie Inception from Chris Nolan where they twist the memento and it, the picture ends right there. And it leaves a lot of questions, but also you could substitute your own answers into it and figure out what the story was. So what is my final score with the, uh, of The Dark Legacy? Guys, straight up four out of four. This is one of the most phenomenal fan films I've seen I have to say, I just finished watching the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi show, and uh, I was less than impressed with it. You know, some of you may have seen my reviews on the channel. I enjoyed this fan film more than the entire Obi-Wan Kenobi show. I mean, sometimes fans say, whoa, how come you compare? You shouldn't compare things, just enjoy things for what they are. No, I will compare. I will compare because one leaves a much greater impact on me, and it fires up a lot more questions and gives me a lot more story going for it, which is a lot more economical. It's only 10 minutes, but I was so on the edge of my seat that I wanted to find out more what happens there. Throughout the entire Kenobi show, we see, for example, the Inquisitors popping off here and there. They dominate the screen all the time, but they literally do nothing except Reva at the very end. So if I were to pick the two, I would watch something like The Dark Legacy 10 times over than Obi-Wan Kenobi show. If you guys disagree with me, if you didn't like this film, if you find that you have very specific observations that I failed to mention in this review, please let me know in the comment sections below. Once again, I'll drop all the links to this video source in the uh, uh, description below. Please go check them out. Support the film director, support the actors, everyone who was involved with it. I think they have done a completely fantastic job. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.